What's up, guys? It's John. Today, I'm going to be going over some precautions you should take if you're going to access the deep web. I don't encourage accessing the deep web. That's why I'm not titling this video how to access the deep web. But if you're going to access the deep web, there's no stopping you. So I will go over some things that you should have if you're going to. The first thing you're going to need is a VPN. And I recommend NordVPN. I'm not sponsored by them, but they have a fantastic VPN. And it's very cheap. Uh, currently 70% off which brings it to a price of $3.49 per month if you buy two years worth, uh, which is not bad at all. Um, I personally use NordVPN. They have a nice double VPN functionality. As you see here, this is good for Tor. They also have, uh, if I could bring it up here, they also have uh, Onion VPN. Uh, so a very good VPN, especially for the price. I definitely recommend it. There are other VPNs. ExpressVPN is definitely faster than NordVPN. Uh, so if you have the money and you want to spend it, ExpressVPN is the best in my opinion. Um, so other than that, you're going to need a virtual machine to run on because you definitely do not run around, want to access the deep web from your main OS uh, because there is the risk of getting hacked or getting some kind of virus. So if you're going to run a virtual machine, you are going to need VirtualBox. Actually, there's two choices. Windows now has a feature called Sandbox, which is a virtual machine inside of Windows. And it is very good. Um, anything you do in it is erased as soon as you close it. Uh, there's no way for them to access your main machine from here. So it's a very safe place to access it from. You can just go on here, download Tor Browser, and uh, yeah. So if you're not going to use Windows Sandbox, or well, let me show you how to get Windows Sandbox first. So you're going to type in features, you're going to turn Windows features on or off, and you're going to scroll down and turn on Windows Sandbox. And you're going to need to enable virtualization on your CPU if you haven't already. Uh, there are tutorials around for that. I'm not going to do that here. Um, so the other option, if you're not going to use Sandbox, is Oracle VM VirtualBox. Um, you could also use this other uh, VM platform, but VirtualBox is fine and works well for most people. And it's very simple to use. And you can make a VPN simply, or not a VPN, a VirtualBox virtual machine very simply you would just go here and you would download something like tails tails is a really good os um, for privacy so you can just go ahead and download uh, an iso here and i'll just torrent it because it's fast so let me just show you guys how to do this real quick nope So I'm going to download this real quick, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so once you have the download, you can go ahead and stop seeding. Uh, it'll be here in your downloads. And you can go to VirtualBox, uh, do a new VirtualBox, call it whatever you want. Uh, this one is a Linux distribution, and it's Debian 64. So then you go next, set some RAM, let's do four gigabytes or so. And then um, you can create a virtual disk. You could do either, not one of these. Uh, you could do either one of these. Uh, I'll just do dynamically allocated as an example. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'll go here, save it there, create. Great. And that will go ahead and create your virtual machine. Then you're going to go ahead and go to settings. And you're going to need to put the disk in the machine, like so. Choose a virtual disk. Add. Uh, we're going to go with Tails. Choose. OK. And go to settings. Increase the display RAM. All right, we'll just leave it alone. 
Uh, we will increase the processor CPUs though to two. And then we can go ahead and start it. We're gonna go ahead and go into tails. Let's close this out. I am running on a Ryzen processor, a first generation Ryzen processor, and it can be a bit uh, buggy when it comes to virtual machines just because of uh, how new they are. They're a lot less buggy than they used to be, but uh, you may run into some issues if you're running a newer Ryzen processor, or rather an older Ryzen processor. I don't know if the new ones have better support or anything like that, but yes. So we're just going to let this load up. So then you could just start Tails. This is going to be a live version of Tails. It's not going to be installed. I honestly don't know if a if you can install Tails. I've only ever ran it live off the ISO. <clears throat> Which is fine. It's a bit slower. It um, it's good for security. I suppose. You don't have to like reinstall it every time or delete it. You know. All right. So when you first get into Tails, uh, it's gonna synchronize the clock and get Tor ready. Um, as you can see up here, Tor is not ready. Or well, I guess it is now. And then you can go ahead and Tor is pre-installed. So you can go ahead and start it. And then that's it, you're good to go. You can go ahead and browse on Tor all you want, go to any Onion websites. Uh, I do not encourage doing any of this. Uh, it's at your own risk. Uh, be safe out there. Um, yeah, so that's how you do it with a virtual machine uh, using VirtualBox. And I highly recommend Tails as it's a very safe operating system and it comes pre-installed with Tor browser. And uh, also, if you're going to do it in Windows uh, Sandbox, then you have to install Tor Browser. And um, that's it. That's all you need to get on the deep web safely, relatively. And um, yeah, you should be good to go. Uh, do any of this at your own risk. I'm just here to uh, show you guys some precautions if you're going to do it anyways. Um, and that's it. See you guys next time.